In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate numerical patterns, analyze relationships between corresponding terms, and graph numerical patterns on coordinate grids. The first table we're going to look at shows gallons, quarts, and pints. In one gallon, there are four quarts and eight pints. We can look at a few different patterns here. We can go to the quarts and realize that the pattern is to add four, so we can just keep adding four for every one gallon. And then the pints has a pattern of adding eight, so you add eight pints for every gallon. We can also see a pattern in going from gallons to quarts. Every time you go from gallons to quarts, you are multiplying by four. So when we go to four gallons, we're going to multiply that by four to get 16 quarts. And then five gallons times four is 20 quarts. To find the number of pints, we can look at the number of gallons and see a pattern that for every one gallon, there are eight pints. For two gallons, there are 16 pints. And for three gallons, there are 24 pints. So if we go to four gallons, we're going to multiply that by eight to get 32 pints. And five gallons times eight is 40 pints. Now we're going to use the information from the table to answer a few questions. The first question asks, what is the rule or pattern for the number of quarts? We can go back to the table on the previous slide and look at the row of quarts and see that each time it's increasing by four. So the rule or pattern is to add four. The next question asks, what is the rule for the relationship between the number of quarts and the number of pints? So this time we're going to look at the relationship between two of the terms. And there are two ways that we can look at this. First, we can start with the quarts and see how they translate into pints. And each time they're doubling or multiplying by two. So we can multiply the number of quarts by two to find the number of pints. We can also look at it in the opposite way and see how pints translate to quarts. We can divide the number of pints by two to find the number of quarts. In the next example, we're going to look at a story problem that shows the number of minutes that were spent studying by two people, Chanel and Travis. The table shows a pattern for how many minutes they each spent studying each day. Chanel starts off with six minutes on day one, followed by 10 minutes and then 14 minutes. We can see there's a pattern of adding four minutes. So we're going to complete Chanel's part of the table. So on day four, she will have read 18 minutes and day five, 22 minutes. Now we're going to look at the pattern in the number of minutes that Travis read. So on day one, he read 12 minutes, on day two, 20 minutes, and day three, 28 minutes, which is an increase of eight minutes each day. This means that on day four, he will have read 36 minutes and day five, 44 minutes. Now we're going to use this information to answer a few questions. The first question asks, what is the pattern in the number of minutes Chanel spent studying? So again, we want to go back to the table and see how Chanel's number of minutes changed each day, and each day they increased by four. So we're going to put add four as the pattern. The next question asks, what is the pattern in the number of minutes Travis spent studying? So going back to Travis's, remember that his minutes increased by eight. So we're going to put add eight as the pattern. The last question asks, what is the relationship between the number of minutes that Chanel spent studying compared to Travis? If we go back to the table, on day one, Chanel spent six minutes studying while Travis spent 12. On day two, Chanel spent 10 minutes while Travis spent 20. On each day, if you multiply the number of minutes that Chanel spent studying by two, you'll get Travis's number of minutes studying. This means that every single day, Travis studies twice as long as Chanel does. And if you look at it from Chanel's perspective, Chanel studies half as long as Travis each day. Both of these answers are correct. In the final example, we're going to complete a table and then we're going to use the information and graph the data on a coordinate grid. The table shows measurement conversions from yards to feet. One yard is equal to three feet, two yards is six feet, and three yards is nine feet. If we continue this pattern using the rule, we're going to multiply four yards by three to get 12, and five yards by three to get 15. From here, we're going to create ordered pairs using the data. The yards will be the x coordinate, and the feet will be the y coordinate. So the first ordered pair will be one, three, then two, six, then three, nine, then four, 12, and then five, 15. Now I'm going to quickly record the ordered pairs next to each point so we know which colored point will represent which ordered pair. Then we need to label the x-axis and y-axis on the coordinate grid. The x-axis will be the yards and the y-axis will be the feet. I'm going to graph the first ordered pair 1, 3 using the red point. We're going to go to the origin and go over to the right one along the x-axis and up 3. 
The second ordered pair is 2, 6, so I'm going to take the orange dot and go to the origin, moving right two units along the x-axis and up six units along the y-axis. Because the points are very small, I suggest going up to the magnifying glass tool under the word insert and zooming into 200%. This will help you zoom in the slide so that you can see the point more clearly on the coordinate grid. To zoom out, just go back to the magnifying glass and click on fit. Continue this with the remaining ordered pairs and feel free to zoom in and out as you need to.